something like half of all PCI is now done transradially in the UK. So I decided I needed to talk to uh, Dr. Karim Ratib, uh, the University Hospital of North Staffordshire in the UK. And we're talking about the neurologic complications following uh, intervention, uh, transfemoral versus transradial. Now this is uh, uh, looking at the access in 300,000 procedures. That's a lot of procedures. Why did you set out to do this study in the first place? Well, in the United Kingdom, as you already said, about uh, 57% in, 57, wow. in 2011 uh, were performed transradially. And there's been a big shift from 2006, where less than 20% of procedures were transradially, to where we are in the present day. And uh, we wanted to look to see if this change had any impact on other outcomes. And uh, especially when people are early on in the learning curve, they're going to have longer procedures, more catheter manipulation, more catheter exchanges, and all these are predictors of uh, neurovascular complications. Well, when they were first being studied uh, and the FDA was reviewing the material, one of the first things they looked at was there was a slight uptick in neurological complications right on, and I thought the FDA was going to have a stroke. What did you find in your study? Well, the uh, bottom line is in 388,000 patients, 147,000 of which were performed radially, the stroke rate was exactly the same with no significant difference in either group. 0.1% uh, was the uh, rate of stroke in both groups. So is that 30-day year? What, what's the numbers? Um, th these, were, these were all periprocedural strokes. Okay. No difference even on the short term on something? Yeah, like these, are the short, these are the short term. These, the, the, the strokes were all recorded on the uh, PCI database, and so um, they're, they're usually strokes that occurred at the time of procedure or shortly after uh, before discharge. I mean, what was it? Because I, you know, I saw the slides myself where it looked at the very beginning like there was that. Is it a, a, a factor of once you get to doing these, those numbers disappear? or? What caused that bump early on that made it appear like there were going to be problems? That was in, the, I think, in the SCAR data. They, yes. they showed they had uh, yes. an increase in stroke initially in the radial group or neurological complication in the radial group. It's, it's not clear what that, that, that was down to. It was a very large difference in the SCAR data early on, and it can't all be accounted for by the learning curve because it was such a large difference. But in the UK data, where we've had a big shift um, over the last five years, there was no, no significant difference year on year in the stroke rates. And this was in lots of, with lots of operators early on in their learning curve when they're switching to doing more radial procedures. I mean, obviously there's more rad transradial procedures being done. And given that, uh, has there been any change in how things are done to reduce whatever chance of neurological complication there might be? Have you gotten better? Um, I, I think with, with, with practice, yeah, people will use less catheters and use uh, yeah, well, their procedure times will be lower. And so with, with doing more radial procedures, people will get better at it. It will take less time to do the procedures. But it's reassuring from our data that even though people are switching from one access site to the other, uh, there was no obvious uh, signal in um, neurovascular complications. So the arguments against going, moving from transfemoral to transradial, they seem to be Diminished. disappearing yeah, yeah. <laughs> very, and, very greatly. And, and the benefits from going transradially, uh, we've seen in, in, in meta-analysis of STEMI patients that there's a significant mortality benefit at 30 right. days in randomized trials. And so, you know, there's, there's more, more reasons to, to, to go transradially and uh, from the right arrival data um, with uh, significantly less access site complications in the radial group. There's, there's, like I say, there's more reasons to go radial than femoral at the moment. And it's really good that out of almost 400,000 people in the study that uh, there really are no differences in neurological complications. Some more good news for uh, transradial access. For Cardiosaurus World News, I'm Rick McGuire. <laughs>